Hi there Maple fans and in this series of videos I'll be sharing what I do throughout an entire year on a monthly basis. Please note that these months are based on UK timings but of course can easily be adapted to anywhere else in the world. And in the second April video we'll have a look at the root system of your trees uh, ready for repotting. We'll have a look at the pot size to use to give them the best head start possible. We'll have a look at how to do the repotting process itself. And we'll also look at watering in because that's also very important. As well as this, I'll cover the compost that I use and the mixture I choose, uh, which works very well for me. And do stick around right to the end because I've got the biggest tree I've ever repotted, which I hope you'll find interesting. So I do think that the key to success is the correct compost when we're repotting Japanese maples or aces as they're also known. Uh, this is ericaceous compost. It's sort of lightweight. Um, it's quite fluffy. It's got lots of organic material in it and it's acidic. So it's sort of full of decaying material. Um, this is the other half of the mixture I use, which is in fact um, mature plant compost. It's denser, it's heavier, it, it literally weighs more. I mean, the bag probably weighs 50% more to double the weight of the ericaceous bag. Uh, the reason being really that that adds some weight to the pots because we don't want them blowing over. And uh, as with many things with Japanese maples, we're trying to find a really good compromise. I'm just showing you the sort of difference between the two there. Uh, I just think that's a really good mixture for me. You can use a much freer draining mixture, but then you'd have to water more often. And anything less free draining than this, I think would be really problematic because aces really don't like wet roots, to be honest with you. So bear in mind, we're trying to produce a compost here that's one for all seasons, winter, summer, spring, autumn. So again, it's, it's always compromised, but this mixture has done me very well. The only thing you have to watch is that you don't overpot too much because it's not that free draining. I know people in the comments have very kindly said, you know, why don't I use a much free draining compost? The trouble is I may go away for two or three days at a time. I need some water retention in the hottest of summers. And I also need enough drainage to sort of survive the, the wettest of winters or particularly the spring actually, which is a really dangerous time as per my uh, previous video. So the spring has been really wet here in the UK and now the weather is, is improving. The weather report looks better it's a great time to get the maples repotted that I choose to repot. What's going to happen is the maples are now in full flow. They're leafing out, they're active. The water that's in the compost I'm going to add will get used by them, absorbed. We're watering a plant at the end of the day, not a pot. And holding back on repotting, I think will really pay dividends. Having mixed a, a really good mix there at super high speed. Um, we're looking at three maples a day, two that I bought last autumn. Um, I've left them in the technical pots because they were safer like that and the Trompenberg on the left which I repotted, I downsized potted actually to sort of save it. So this little fella here I mentioned in the, la the last video, a little bit of frost damage which is a shame, silly me, should have put it under more protection. But the, the top looks okay, it's not doing too badly. Um, but we need to sort of make a value judgement on what size pot to pot that onto. And we've also got Kamagata as well, lovely little tree. He's sort of done better, um, seems quite vigorous actually, but we haven't actually looked at the roots yet and that's that's the, the key to the making those decisions really. But the top of the tree looks really good and the little Trompenberg is looking grand, glad to see that it survived the winter, it's leafing out and after all the abuse I gave it by over potting it, perhaps it will forgive me and produce quite a nice tree in the long run. I see there's a bit of die back there on the ends and things but that's all because it was far too wet, far too soggy in a pot that was just so far too big. I tend to buy big. pots from garden centres this time of year or indeed supermarkets actually have some really good deals on them. Uh, as a little add on sale, they, they, they will sell you a pot or, or, or two pots for the price of kind of arrangement really rather cheaply. Um, as you can see here, just literally offering that Kamagata up into that size pot, it doesn't feel right really. It, it's not going to sort of fit inside. I mean, that's an obvious point. Um, but I can't really make a judgment on that until we've had a, a really good look at the root system because I don't know how full that pot is of roots really. But on the face of it, a pot about this big does look rather better. So that's about a 20 centimetre pot. It fits in quite well. And by the time I've loaded up some compost below it and lifted it slightly, it kind of looks all even more sensible. So having mixed my favourite uh, compost uh, as a 50-50 mixture, just to note that on these packets, it does say that these contain feed within the compost. Uh, one's slowly released, one's four months worth. So I won't be adding any more feed to the aces at this point because they're just not going to need it. They're going to get what they need from the compost, to be quite honest. 
and I tend to use uh, these little squares of landscape fabric. That's my sort of preference, really. You can use broken pots and things to uh, fill the drainage hole at the bottom. I've never worked out where I'm supposed to get all this broken pot from, really. Uh, I just find that holds water back a little bit more than broken pots anyway. Uh, sources there, absolute no-no, we won't be using one of those. And here's Benny Sazanami that I potted last year. And just to show that uh, when done correctly, it can uh, create fantastic growth. If you're enjoying the contents of my videos, and I really hope you do, um, please like, please subscribe, it's really helpful. And please leave any notes and ask any questions in the comments because I'll do my very, very best to answer them for you. It's now the exciting sort of spring, summer, autumn season for maples in the UK. I've got loads of videos planned about trees out and about, in the ground, in pots, um, all kinds of things really. So um, I hope you stay with me for the, uh, the journey of Japanese maples that I so much enjoy. So just start by having a look at this little fella here. Um, I'm just going to sort of take off some of the debris and bits and pieces off the top so it doesn't spill everywhere, I suppose. I've got uh, fresh mulch in the sort of form of mini bark and stuff like that I can use anyway. But yeah, just cleaning the top off a bit works really well. And then I'm just going to sort of invert it. I'm trying to use my phone with the one hand and do this one handed, so forgive me. Um, but essentially, you can tip it upside down, give the pot a squeeze and a little um, bit of manoeuvring really and away it comes uh, interesting i've never seen this before there's actually a snail unfortunately a deceased snail uh, that was actually buried at the bottom of the pot no no problem with that whatsoever but the main thing is that those look like really good roots to me um, the compost mixture is full of roots actually they're all over the place they're white looking they're healthy they're, they're looking very good that encouraged me to to sort of choose that slightly bigger pot because that's going to take off it's going to grow really quickly and if it's already filling the pot it's in then it needs repotting into it into a larger one really the the ceramic pot itself will offer really good drainage as well it'll offer more weight to the plant stop it blowing over um, and retain water rather better than the little plastic ones so sure again if you can water every single day that's absolutely fine use a free draining mixture these plastic pots are good but if you can't i think the security of having it in a ceramic pot and with a bit more moisture retaining compost is great so little piece of material goes in the bottom there that's all well and good uh, there's the drainage hole making sure that's absolutely free and clear and then i'll just take some compost basically once that's all lined up and add sort of a bit of compost to form the base so once that's in uh, a couple of shovel fills i'm getting reasonably good at estimating this now pat it down a little bit and then we can sort of offer our tree up and the key thing there, leave it in its plastic pot, that's absolutely fine. The pots are really thin, so they're not going to make much difference to the, the height or the width of the uh, root ball, etc. really. And what we're trying to do is to get the top of the existing pot about an inch under the bottom, really, where the little rim is there. Really, really important this, because we need enough room at the top so that we can flood it with water um, when we water and also enough room to put some mulch on the top to uh, use that too, really, because that's going to really help to sort of prevent weeds and evaporation, etc. So that looks kind of about right to me. So at this point as well, now the levels are right, or the sort of centre is correct, basically, where the tree is. We have the option to kind of recenter the tree a little bit, angle it slightly to get it level, um, just to tinker with it if we want to. So I think by angling it slightly in that way, I can get a... A more upright tree it's going to look a bit better and now is the chance to take advantage of that to be honest with you yeah so just just looking at it up and down different angles gives you a an interesting sort of uh, judgment on what to what to commit yourself to i suppose so once i've kind of worked that out um, i can start packing a little bit of compost down the sides there just to hold it in position final check uh, rotate the pot a little bit again just to double check this really and we're good to go. Just note there's the graft point there, which we don't want to get any compost anywhere near um, because that's where the original Acer palmatum palmatum rootstock has been attached to the main known tree at the top. So that's really good because it's quite a high grafted little little tree, this really. So that, that join is sort of a long way away, which is absolutely fantastic, to be honest. And then we can carry on filling in and we can add some compost to the sides and sort of start to pack it down and sort of push it home really to form a sort of fairly dense um, mixture around the tree leaving again still in the plastic pot though that's that's really really key 
Um, this technique is called slip potting and I do enjoy using it. What it does is give you a really, really good contact between the tree roots on the existing pot and the new compost. I know some people may sort of tease the roots out or mess, up, mess around with them. I don't feel the need to be honest with you. The, the tree will quite happily grow and take its uh, take up the space in the new pot over time and doesn't seem to have any problem in kind of doing that really. And possibly in a slightly childish sand castleist kind of way, I really enjoy this bit. So as I've packed the compost fairly dense around the outside, you should be able with a little wriggle, actually remove the uh, plastic pot out and with the tree intact, keep it in the same orientation is important. So I'm just going to put that in the same orientation to the side. And it's left me with a sort of uh, hole that's a perfect size for the root ball and the associated compost in the original pot really. So as these technical pots are so thin, if I just tease out the tree there, just lift it gently by its little branch, we can sort of pop that in place. And of course it's going to be a near enough perfect fit really. So we've done the alignment, we've done all the checks, the height's going to be right. It's going to leave me with enough around the top for the mulch and the water. And with a nice firm press down, we've got a, a well sort of um, done slip potted little tree, to be honest with you. And it's quite satisfying, as I said, to, to, to do that process. So the next step really is to water the tree in. Um, because I've added a substantial amount of compost, I really want to give this a really good soaking and double check the drainage is all working correctly, really, and that, that whole stayed free draining. So I will just put it on a, a little saucer there sort of thing. What you'll find is, is that I'm pouring an awful lot of water in the top and nothing's coming through at the bottom. So I find that a uh, new compost is, even though it appears to be semi-moist, it's actually quite dry and there's loads of air gaps in it because it, there just is, it's just been placed into a, a new pot really. So that sort of seems to have soaked in, but hasn't made much impression to be honest with you. So what I'll probably do is give it a, a really good second watering. And on this occasion, I've done what I normally do, which is absolutely flood the pots, to be honest with you. If the compost is free enough draining, and this is, and the hole at the bottom is absolutely fine, it will be fine to do this. And what you'll say on that second watering is all these bubbles start to appear. So it's really interesting, even if you drown it once, it never, it sort of goes through and misses some of the gaps in the compost where wetting it all first and then applying a second watering to it does really, really help to get into those air gaps and to make sure it's thoroughly, thoroughly saturated. And there we can see having done it twice at the bottom, we start to get water come out through the drainage hole at the base. So that's all, you know, it would, but it's working fine really. And that will just make sure that uh, any water that's overloaded in the pot can have somewhere to flow. A uh, big mistake is to ever use a little tray like this. Actually, I wouldn't really use that long term. Um, and actually put the pot paps down onto some clay soil or something like that and block that drainage hole up. So mine tend to be on pebbles because I'm lucky enough to have those or slate or something or sort of little feet or, or whatever to get the pot off the ground is really, really beneficial. So once the next tree where the top growth doesn't seem quite so um, vigorous and there has been a bit of dieback, so slight concern there. But again, lifting the plant out and actually looking at those roots, it's a really, really tight, ball of roots there I mean much more so than the other one actually so that's just telling me and encouraging me to go for the same sort of pot size as the previous tree I'm sure that will be fine that's a really really vigorous root system and it's what's going to generate the, the growth on the top at the end of the day so once more we're going to put that uh, in the bottom we're going to offer the tree up as exactly we did before and line him up correctly Pop the pot in, fill around the edge with compost as we've as we did in the previous tree, smooth it all out, remove the pot, and basically just follow the same sequence as the previous tree. That's going to fit beautifully in there. Once you once you get this down, if you do two or three at a go, it doesn't take very long at all actually. So we'll, again, flooding it completely with water. Note the pots there on the right hand side. It's a darker colour. It's a uh, a different shade almost to its rim um, and also the pot next to it that's because the pot on the right has been thoroughly saturated um, what you'll find with these type of ceramic pots as well is that they will absorb water and sort of carry it away so that in a sense helps drainage in itself really uh, and can also cause in the summer now this little fella here is a different proposition so this is the trompenberg one that i down potted 
and put back into a small pot to try and save it. And what you can see is that if you just do that, the, 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 there isn't a sort of solid root ball um, filling the pot. There's a lot of loose compost in there as well. So I'm going to go for the smaller pot here and just sort of keep it pretty much the same size, I suppose. The logic being I've still got uh, a pot there that's going to add a bit more weight to it. It's going to hold water a bit better than the plastic pot because they dry it really, really quickly. But just taking them out very carefully there, as you can see, there's nothing like the root growth as there is on the previous plants. So it really needs this season to recover, to be honest with you, or continue that recovery process. So uh, potting this into a pot that's any bigger will only cause harm at this point. And this is one I just need to keep a little bit of an eye on. So in this case, I'm just going to sort of push that in there and sort of fill around it. And uh, I'm sure, well, fingers crossed, that's going to do really well this year. And just noting there, actually, the, the composite itself is already really quite damp. So again, it shows you that without a good re root system in place, the tree, even in a small pot, pot like that, has had trouble actually drying the compost out with its roots. So definitely the roots are a hidden problem. And again, I'm not even going to put any extra water to that. It feels quite damp anyway. So we'll just leave that little fella the way it is. And just showing you here the other two trees with some mulch on the top, um, which I'm going to locate in a nice shady kind of corner with some friends. Um, we'll do some more videos on this, but that's uh, Makai Yatsabusa at the back, which is absolutely gorgeous as well. But I, I think he's going to be ha they're going to be happy there. And here's a little Trompenberg. I've just popped him exactly where he was before, actually, because it seems to have done OK in that corner. So why change it? Uh, if it, if it's not broke, why fix it? So here's a little fella I bought uh, at the end of last year. Lots of nice roots there. Um, just looking, it's not going to grow to huge proportions, this tree. So I don't want to put it again into a massive pot. That's another indication not to do that. At the end of the day, if you buy a new tree, I don't know it. I don't understand it. It's It's new to me. So I would definitely err on the side of caution for trees that you don't know well. I know now that something like a Siriu, for example, grows that ridiculously fast. You'll probably get away with a quite a large amount of overpotting. If you don't know it, err on the side of caution. I mean, the small pots are relatively inexpensive. They can be reused for more trees later. Um, there's not a lot gain to be sort of massively overpotting, really, but uh, could, and that could sadly result in, result in a dead tree. So if you watch my uh, other video from this month april in the uk you'll notice that i mentioned about a pot here that's uh, been frost damaged they shouldn't do that really but sometimes they do it's just look at the drawer i suppose water's got in it and it's cracked quite a substantial tree here um, it's a blood good absolutely fantastic tree especially the light falling through its leaves it's most impressive but uh, something needed to be done so i managed to purchase a pot for a reasonable money it was two for 14 English sort of pound sort of thing really which isn't too bad for a pot of that size um, so we're going from a 33 centimeter pot into about a 40 so first of all just clearing off all the old in fact the the the, the new um, mulch that I put on the top quite recently in the other video just to, just to tidy it up a bit really I was really a bit worried about how this was going to work to be honest with you I'd even got a hammer available to to smash the pot away from it if it was going to be really problematic. But actually, one, once these trees get a really good uh, established root ball, they form a kind of mass of roots, and it's not too bad at all. So you see there, I'm just poking around. It's really solid. Uh, on the previous video, I had trouble getting this little identification stake even into the compost at all, really. And there's some pretty meaty roots at the base there. So this is all telling me that this is a pretty solid root ball. So preparing the new pot in an extremely similar way, bit of fabric at the bottom, covering it in compost. It's just a, a bigger version of the, the small uh, plants that we did earlier, I suppose, really. And now I'm glad I've uh, eaten my spinach this morning because this was reasonably heavy. But because the tree absorbed a lot of moisture out of the compost, it wasn't as heavy as I thought it would be. So with a, with a good old lift, you can see how densely packed those roots are. It's absolutely chock a block with them to be honest so this tree was you know time for a or due for a replant anyway so the fact this the pot it was in actually broke um was kind of serendipity because it needed to be replaced anyway sort of sort of sort of thing again we can have a play we can level it up i've judged pretty well on the first attempt there the to get the levels right 
And once you've got that pot compost at the base correct, you've then got the ability to have a little jiggle round. But uh, yeah, absolutely a massive roots there. So once again, similar process, stepping back, have a look, see if it looks upright. Um, it kind of seemed to make sense to have this tree sort of more to the one side of a pot. It is a bit awkward when the pot isn't massively bigger than the existing one because to get the, the compost down the sides. But nonetheless, um, you know, you do the best you can. And to level the tree a little bit and make it look right, um, it's gone off centre a little bit, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, in fact, it makes life easier, really, because uh, there's a gap. There's clearly a gap there to fill with the fresh compost. So here we are, just uh, sort of packing it down with the trowel. I actually found quite soon the best thing to do really was to get my hands involved at this point. Um, with your hands and fingers, it just seemed to be easier to sort of get the compost as far as possible round the sides and the base. And once again, of course, using a full blown watering can on this occasion, giving it a really good uh, drenching and then repeating the process just to make sure the, uh, the compost is absolutely saturated.